Hi, everybody. I wanted to talk a little bit about being disabled and, and body image. I can't speak for all disabled people, and I can't speak for any able-bodied people. I think everybody, and this is kind of what I was taught by my mom, everybody has a disability. She'd tell me, Tanya, yours is just more visible. But I think it can be easier for the public to see a disabled person and accept that they're disabled. That can be easier than for the child growing up. Except we have to learn to accept that we're disabled. We have to accept there are things we can and can't do. And through that process, it, you kind of get angry. You get, it's grief, you know. I know I went through it when I was a young child and growing up. Uh, there were things we did at school that I couldn't participate in. And I wanted so badly to be normal. But I couldn't. You know, there are things I couldn't do. And so I grieved for the loss of normalcy, you know. It's like field day when... I grew up in the 80s. Um, they would have field day. There were very limited events that I could participate in. And I never, I just got told, you're doing this, this, or this. And I knew the people on my team kind of didn't like it completely because I would slow the team down and they wouldn't get the first place ribbon. You know, I, I knew the other kids would prefer I not be on their team. Most of the kids were nice enough not to say it. And the kids that did pick on me, that was a small group. Uh, yes, there was difficulties there, and I got bullied quite a bit. There, My mom used to tell people, and she still does, that she'd have to come home from work and have to convince me every night to go back to school the next day. And I knew I was different. But I didn't want to be. I don't think anybody wants to be. They want to be what they perceive to be normal. But that's all it is, really, is a perception. What is normal? Normal for me looks different than normal for you. It doesn't mean it's any less normal. It doesn't mean you can put everything defined as normal in a little box. This is normal, this is not. It doesn't work that way. But when you're growing up with lack of abilities that your other peers can do... And, you know, would you want to participate? And even if you're with the group, uh, you're still sometimes sitting on the sidelines and watching. And maybe you convince yourself that you had fun. Because it was the expected reply, you know, did you have fun? Well, you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, so you say you had fun when all in reality you wished you'd never gone. Because all it did was serve to prove in your mind that you're different and you sat and watched the other kids do things that you couldn't and smiled and grinned and pretended to be happy and pretended to have fun when the reality was all you wanted to do was cry because you couldn't be like them and especially growing up Disabled, you want so badly to be like your peers, but you can't. You got to be you. And I'm not sure how many people even think about that. I mean, from the outside, you see a person who may be sitting down, we don't look so disabled. I've been told that you don't look disabled. 
until I get up and walk across the room, especially if I'm not walking without supports like a walker, crutches, or my service dog, Archer, his mobility, a mobility dog, uh, along with a few other things. You know, but you see me without those aids, and you see me walking, and it looks different than the way you walk. Doesn't make it any more abnormal. It's perfectly normal for me. But you can tell that I'm disabled. But yet, when I'm sitting down and when I'm talking to you, maybe they think, well, hey, she's intelligent. And I like to think I am. But I think a lot of us, and I can only speak for myself here, but I think a lot of people, being disabled or not, doesn't matter, hide who they really are and go with what's expected. And we shouldn't be that way. You should never be ashamed to be who you are. I believe in God. If you don't, I'm sorry. You're probably on the wrong channel. But I believe that God makes no mistakes. People make mistakes. And God can use the mistakes people make for, for good. And I was asked when several times I've been asked, well, if you didn't have to be born with cerebral palsy, would you, know, would you like that? And I'd have to say no. I mean, having cerebral palsy, I laughingly call it, I've nicknamed it in my own head, a pain disorder. Because there's not a day that goes by that I'm not in some kind of pain for something. And a friend of mine has uh, MS, and so we've kind of coined those as, as pain disorders. So it's not an actual name or anything, it's... You know what we laughingly tease about calling it because if you can't laugh at yourself, you know, that's one thing you got to learn to take yourself and laugh and joke and accept. But if you have a child, especially who's been born with a disability or even becomes disabled, there's a grieving process. Grieving what you never had or what you've lost. And I've always said, and anybody in my friends and family circle could tell you I've always said this, it's easier to be born disabled than to become disabled. An example, my stepfather, very independent man, prided himself in being able to get, you know, to help others and supply what mom and me and Christy needed and being there for us and being a strong support. And I always respected him for willingly walking into a already established family. And I was like eight or nine. My sister was two years older. Well, 23 months. Um, and, and knowing, you know, hey, this kid is going to have problems that I have to take on if I want this family. And he didn't hesitate. He didn't say, well, I don't think I can deal with a disabled kid. He said, bring it on, you know. I remember one time we were low on groceries shortly after Mom and George started dating. And um, Mom was a single mom, and she struggled sometimes. But we always had food on the plate, it was, even if I didn't like it. Ech, liver, yuck. But it was food, you know. And we were running a little bit low on groceries, and my stepfather was one of 19 children and my grandma Bay raised actually two others along with those 19 and uh, her husband died when my stepfather was 12 and he was one of the older boys so you know 
grew up in a big family and you know so he he knew lack from growing up but he didn't want us to have that lack and so even though we weren't like out of food you know we were not living in the lap of luxury you know <laughs> but we weren't too bad yet we were just low and it was a while before mom was going to get paid again. I think it was close to the beginning of the, or the middle of the week. And uh, so he went and took his own money and whatever. And he brought in groceries to our house. Not because anybody asked him to. But because he knew he could help and he wanted to help. And I love my stepfather. We didn't always get along. We were both too bullheaded. But I always respected him. Because it takes a strong person, man or woman, to walk into an established family, see a child that's eight or nine, and you know they're going to have more surgeries, which you're going to have to help the family deal with. And not flinching and, and taking on that responsibility along with another child, you know, into an established unit like that. I, I greatly respected my stepfather. Didn't always get along with him, but I do. I've always respected him. But he always said, you're only disabled if you think you are. He said that to me several times. And I didn't get it. I didn't understand it till I got older. The disability isn't in our physical bodies. Well, yeah, it's limitations. And yeah, every day that goes by, I have something that hurts. But that's not the biggest thing. This up here is. We can stop ourselves and block ourselves from accepting God's blessings for us because we don't think we deserve it, whether we think that consciously or not. Like I said, someone asked me if you could have your CP gone and not ever have to worry about it, would you? And I, I have to say no. Is it easy to have cerebral palsy? No. No, it's not. But it's part of me. And it makes me who I am. Without my cerebral palsy, my life would have been different. And I would not be the person I am today. And I love myself enough that I wouldn't want to give that part of me up. You know, I've always said CP is a blessing in some ways. When you meet someone and they don't automatically realize you're disabled. You can see a split second before they figure it out. And they put that mask on that society says that they should act this way or that way. You can see sometimes what the person really feels or thinks you know just a brief flash something they'll say and then they'll backpedal oh I didn't mean that or the look in their eyes and you know whether you got a true friend who's gonna walk with you through fire or whether you've got someone who just wants to be proper for society but might say different things when your back is turned. And having a disability that isn't always apparent, uh, unless I'm moving around, you know, if I'm sitting still or something, you might not notice. Then they get the, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Why are you sorry? 
God doesn't make mistakes. People do. But God uses people's mistakes for his greater good. Maybe my disability can turn into an ability that will help somebody else. And if so, if I've helped one person in my 45 years on this planet, then it is worth every day of pain, every day of shame and grief. Because, yeah, especially as a kid, I was ashamed to have cerebral palsy. I grieved as a child because I, what I lost that I couldn't be like other kids and run and play and play tug of war and go roller. I could roller skate, but I had never, I've never been able, I fall down, I run into walls, and I fall down. Did I mention I fall down? Yeah, wheels and I don't get along. I can't drive, of course, now. I made that decision on my own. Uh... There's some decisions when you're disabled, as a disabled a parent or a disabled child, or a disabled child growing up. Now I don't know how all parents did it, but my mother, when I got to be a certain age, started to let me make more decisions about me. Uh, for instance, when I was 15, mom and I sat down and she asked me, "Listen, do you want to learn to drive?" You know, and, and we listed out, you know, the pros, here are the cons, here's some things that, that you might not be thinking of that, you know, you could have trouble with as a driver. Which, you know, she, mom's been driving all her life. She knows more than I do about it and was able to point out prob areas that I might have more trouble. And I made the decision and she left it completely up to me. And I made the decision that I never want to drive. But that was my decision. Uh, when I was 16, Shriners wanted to do another surgery. And it would have been pretty invasive and very painful. And Mom's like, it's not my decision. She's old enough to make the decision herself. And some of the doctors did not appreciate that. They wanted mom to say yes or no. And mom was like, no, she's old enough. Let her ask the questions. Let her um, take the lead. This is her body, not mine. But I think everybody's disabled. Everybody has something wrong with them. Mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. Everybody's got something wrong. Some of us just have it more visibly than others. So what? Use what you're given, the abilities and the lack. And if you have a child growing up, and you're a parent of a disabled child, expect some anger. Expect some grief and disappointment and tears. It's all going to come with it until they accept themselves. I still have, I'm not sure the technical term, I, I guess you call it body dysmorphia. I have problems with my self-image, my self-conscious, self-confidence. And I don't always see myself as I truly am. Um, sometimes I look in the mirror and I see a girl that used to be a lot heavier set. And mom keeps telling me, you're still thinking about that fat girl and you're not that girl anymore. Well, it's just like growing up with a disability. You know, you've got to come to a time where you're going to accept growing up or being disabled as an adult. Even if you're in a car wreck and you become disabled and you're 50 years old, you're going to go through grief. 
of what you had and what you lost. And you'll take a road to accepting what you've got now. And then your life's wide open. Support each other through it. And there's nothing you can't do. Have a good day, everybody.